So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and in this video I'm going to be giving you a easy to understand tutorial on how to complete the tortured path. Now this easter egg quest is very different to zombie easter egg quests that we are used to, as the only way that you can officially complete this and get the cutscene to physically play at the end, meaning you've actually achieved the easter egg and completed it, is by playing in the tortured path public playlist. Simply playing each chapter in a custom lobby with your friends is not going to work. You have to play it within the public playlist and complete each map on your first attempt in quick succession as you'll be put forward onto chapter two where you'll hopefully complete that in one foul sweep and then you move on to chapter three which you'll complete in one foul sweep and that way you get yourself the cutscene. It's pretty silly how this is the only way to actually officially beat the easter egg is by playing it through this playlist but if that changes I will of course let you know but you don't unlock the survival maps for this easter egg completion unless you play the public playlist and complete all the easter eggs in there i'd advise you get four of your friends and invite them in and then go into the public playlist so you have all your friends inside of the game within the public playlist for you to do this so it seems like four players is going to absolutely be the way forward unless you want to try and coordinate this with random players that you have found in your public playlist search if this guide is useful for you then please drop a thumbs up on the video if you do find it useful as this has taken over 48 hours of manpower to be able to bring this tutorial to you and if you want to find easter egg hunters within the game so you can all jump into the public playlist then you can use the comment section down below to help you find some players i'd also recommend you have some consumables as well such as four meters as well as insta kills or double points those are pretty useful and will definitely help you out throughout your times on these easter eggs but anyway enough chattering it's chapter one time into the storm and for us to start this easter egg there is going to be a zombie body which we're going to have to build which consists of a zombie head two arms two legs and a torso there are five spawn locations for each of these body parts and i'm going to go ahead and just show you these all in this video right now you don't have to pick these up in any particular order simply scout around the map and if you come across these locations and a body part is there pick it up we're looking for a head two arms two legs and a torso and big shout out to crafty animation for the footage you're about to see here as he's restarted his game enough times to find every single spawn for every single body part so big shout out to him starting with the first arm locations here this first one can be behind a pallet in the cellar near the staircase you'll just notice it right there a second location can be hidden behind stamina up and you've got to crouch when picking it up it is quite a nasty one there the third one is going to be on a basket handle so you just want to make your way here pick it up boom fourth location can be in the plant box near the sniper wall by right here a fifth can be in the flames of the fireplace right here the sixth location could be in between these fence posts by this table right here the seventh can be on top of a crate of cans which is behind the windmill uh, eighth location can be sticking out of a broken wall which you can notice right here then the ninth one can be on top of a log pile and then finally the tenth location is in front of the fireplace next to the electric cherry perk as for the head location the first part could be in a chest of drawers right here the second location for it could possibly be inside of a large saucepan in the sink of this house it's very noticeable the third one can be on a fence post by the windmill and where you fill up for the first pack a punch ritual pretty simple the fourth one can be on the back of a truck tow bar and to the right of quick revive it's just sort of dislodged in there and the last spawn location can be on top of a shelving unit i'm looking for two zombie legs and there's 10 locations the first one can be inside a hanging basket to the right of the door near the elevator mg wall by that you're seeing on your screen here the next one could be on a fence post right here the third can be on the driver's side wheel of the blue truck which is right there a fourth location can be on the ground and in between two posts right here the fifth could be standing to the right of electric cherry the sixth could be sticking out of a hole next to electric cherry the seventh can be sticking out of a wine rack in the cellar, which is going to be right there. An eighth can be under a bench to the left of Pack-A-Punch. Another location is going to be hanging from the ceiling right here. And the last one could be inside a hanging basket at the front of the house. 
and we're now looking for the torso and there's five spawns for this the first can be inside a box to the left of the sniper wall by right there next location could be inside a upright wheelbarrow next to the lmg wall by the third can be inside the fireplace right here the fourth can be on a window ledge above pack a punch which is very easy to notice and the last location is going to be on top of the overturned cart next to the windmill once you've gotten all of these body parts we can move on to the next step which is going to involve you being by the windmill and the first pack a punch soul box basically you're going to be shooting this rope which is hanging off from the tree and going to be shooting the highest point of it which is connected to the actual tree branch itself you shoot it and it should fall down and what's happened is it's going to flow through the river and when the next round begins you can interact with this broken down tree and by holding it square or x is going to bring the tree up which will allow you to pick up the rope once you've got all the body parts and you've got the rope we now need to go on to at least round five because we need some whistlings and what you want to be doing here is you want to find two whistlings and make them charge into each other you can try to do this in the middle of the round or save two whistlings for the end of the round and cause both whistlings to charge into each other by shooting them and hopefully if you've angled it right they should run towards each other, hit each other, and it should drop a whistling arm, which you can pick up. You'll see it on the ground. It'll have a little highlight over it. Once we've got all these parts, there is now one more thing we need to do. And in the spawn where you spawned originally, if you turn around, you'll notice a truck and a dead cow. You'll notice that there'll be a drop pod and there'll be metal rods from the pod, which have fallen onto the front of the truck and next to the dead cow. You simply want to hold square to pick those up. So we should have all the zombie parts we should have these two metal rods and the whistling arm with this whistling arm you can use it to stop the windmill from spinning and we're going to use it to place it into the windmill gear cogs at the right moment so that the windmill stops spinning at the correct time so it's lined up perfectly as we can place the zombie body parts onto this windmill as you see in this video footage you want the windmill blade to stop in this angle exactly where it's perfectly straight as that's the only angle in which you can be able to place the zombie body as well as the two lightning rods which we picked up earlier if you don't have this angle then you won't be able to put the zombie body part on so the best way to go about getting the timing right is to have someone waiting by the gears of the windmill and essentially when the windmill blade and the sort of white part of the blade hits the middle of the door into the windmill shout now the player by the windmill gears can simply hold square which we should should dislodge the gears and it should stop the windmill blade at the exact right moment. Don't be surprised if you can't get this on your first attempt but keep trying it because you can just keep dislodging it and placing it and stopping the gears as much as you want. I definitely recommend you have a whistling at the end of this round as that way the round won't flip because we want the round to flip but only once we've achieved having the zombie on the windmill. Once a zombie is successfully on the windmill you want to dislodge the gears again and send the blade up so the blade that the zombie is on is facing a perfect 180 degrees from where we just had it so the zombie is literally standing right up at the highest point of the windmill perfectly straight when that's happened you can end the round and what should happen is the zombie body will be struck by lightning and the zombie body will fall to the ground assuming you're being efficient with this the round should be round six now this will be an objective round so you don't really have to pay attention to the zombie but on the next round so the round after the zombie has fallen down onto the ground the zombie is going to stand up and it's going to be making a slow path around the map this thing is going to be attacked by zombies and it's up to every single person in the game to distract the zombies from attacking this zombie so he is escorted successfully successfully all the way to the Faust Blitz house. So I definitely recommend Jack in the Boxes at this point, maybe also using Shell Shock, just simply getting the zombies as far away as possible from this zombie and you escort it without it being damaged by zombies. It can take a few hits, but I definitely wouldn't risk it. You just want to slowly walk this thing around to the Faust Blitz house, protecting it from zombies until it crawls into the debris in this house. Once that's happened, you can go ahead and finish the round and progress to the next round as when the next round starts that zombie is going to reappear out from the debris with a battery in its hand 
This is where this step is a bit finicky and at the moment a tiny bit glitchy. But the way that this step works is you have to charge the battery by killing zombies near to this zombie which is walking with the battery. It's going to be making a route towards the house cellar. And what you need to do is you need to just absolutely go ham killing as many zombies near this thing as fast as possible before he makes his way into the house. I recommend jack in the boxes. I recommend that you don't use shell shock because you want the zombies to be continuously spawning so you have enough souls and you'll know when it's complete because you won't see any more souls going into the zombie you also want to make sure that the zombie doesn't take too much damage from uh other zombies because if so the zombie will die out and you have to restart the easter egg all over again but eventually the zombie will stop collecting energy and on its route towards the cellar door it should drop the battery it can drop it at any moment within the house but in our gameplay it dropped it at the the final part of its route where it died and dropped the battery right near the door you simply pick up the battery place it in the machine next to the door and once the door is open you can retrieve the hilt you'll be gifted with all perks which is amazing and these are like six perk slots as well so if you go down as long as you get revived you can refill these perk slots by buying the rest of the perks around the map but now what you need to do is survive the rest of the map like i mentioned you have to complete all three of these chapters one after another in quick success session so round nine is going to be an objective round and then round 10 is going to be the boss fight if you have any trouble with this boss fight or the tactics on it I have a guide down below in the description on how to defeat every single boss within all three chapters as it's important that you defeat the bosses and obviously don't die because if so you have to restart all over again and then of course make sure that you leave the map you escape the map in time you're in that zone at the right time so that you see success on your screen when you see that timer tick down to zero and we can move on to chapter two which is across the depths it should load up straight away into the second map if you're playing through the public playlist which you should be doing and let's move on to chapter two it's a bit late for you to go and change this stuff now but even so if you're just watching so you know how to complete this easter egg it's very important that you diverse your loadouts i was using shell shock another player was using shell shock and another was using free fire definitely very very useful first thing you want to be doing within any chapter of the tortured path is to be filling up the pack a punch soul box which is going to be somewhere in the spawn once that's taken care of you want to make your way down to this portion of the boat and you want to melee this uber schnell battery it's going to start emitting this energy and all players need to go towards it and it's going to give you some very weird vision it gives you a wider field of view but also as the rounds progress the zombies are going to be spawning in like as if the zombies were teleporting and they will teleport port in and out of reality and get closer and closer towards you so just a warning that that is going to be something you're going to be dealing with throughout the rest of your time playing this map once you're in this vision mode you'll want to go to the next round as you can't progress until we get to the next round and i advise saving a zombie at the end of round two so you can go and do this but around the map now in this vision you're going to find around the map nine fish which are going to be jumping and hopping around in different locations and we'll show you all of them now within this video there's a total of nine they all spawn at the same time so all it is a case of is going around the map and shooting all nine of them keep a count you know maybe say it out loud each one you're shooting you know keep a count of one two three and count all the way up to nine so you've got all nine fish because you want to make sure you've got all of them before you go to the next round otherwise this will not work some of these fish are hidden in pretty interesting locations that make it pretty hard to see but if you can't see this for whatever reason you can also hear the fish jumping around but with this visual guide i'm pretty confident that you'll have no trouble when it comes to finding all nine fish but once you've shot all nine fish end the round and at this portion of the map if you stand here as the round begins you should notice this huge flying fish it looks crazy this is zombies anything can happen here and this zombie fish is flying through the air and is going to go and follow a route to a specific uber schnell station these are the sort of houses that contain the batteries so if you had a battery you'd place it in one of these and that's essentially what we have to do around the map there's going to be some wall buys which previously weren't there and you're gonna have to search around for these as there's quite a few there's about three or four within the spawn room and there's also one near where the 
fish first spawned and you're going to be looking for a uber schnell wall buy which costs 3,000 points so make sure you've got enough points for this but essentially you want to try and save as many zombies as you can because you only have 10 waves for this and one player is going to purchase the uber schnell carry it all the way to where the fish is floating and place that battery into the uber schnell station once the battery is placed in the uber schnell station any zombies that are killed near it they are going to die and this is essentially a soul box which takes about 15 to 20 zombie souls for it to complete so make sure you have the battery in there before you kill zombies around it otherwise it's not going to work you're not going to be getting any souls but you know you've completed it because you'll hear a completion noise and more importantly you'll see that big fish flying through the air towards a second uber schnell location but since this map is without a doubt the smallest and narrowest map out of the three chapters in the tortured path this is why i recommend shell shock a lot when it comes to filling up the soul boxes here because these are not easy by any means especially when you have this vision mode as well the way that these zombies spawn is so sporadic and so crazy next thing you know these zombies could have disappeared and reappear right in front of you and corner you into a corner essentially so shell shock is great as well as free fire and you know any consumables that you might want to use as well insta kill would definitely help you out a lot when it comes to filling up these soul boxes really really quickly but also be wary as well that on rounds three six and nine you're going to have objective rounds so depending on what the objective is you'll kind of want to go ahead and basically complete that as quickly as possible because they all have a lotted amount of time for it to be completed and if you don't complete them in that time then you will fail the objective you've failed the chapter and you have to start again all the way from round one so i really advise you as much as important as it is to fill up these soul boxes you want to also make sure that you complete these objectives but when you've completed an uber chanel you'll want to follow the fish as i think it needs a player nearby for it to actually move to its next location but we got our third and final one here which was under the staircase right here and this one is just an awful spot definitely without doubt in terms of you know killing zombies because there's just no space to move around as well so if you can i'd say also purchase some starting pistols from the random start of pistol wall buys because you might get a chance to get lucky and get jack in the boxes like we did and all players in the game got the jack in the boxes as well which made life a lot easier shell shock jack in the boxes you're basically sorted i also want to stress how important it is that once this third and final battery has been filled up with enough souls that's going to be it you're going to be teleported to a new area so i can't stress enough as well that you're filling up all the different um, parts around the map to get yourself pack a punch if you don't know how to do that essentially around the map there's going to be three different areas that are going to light up with green lights one at a time we started off in spawn with one and once you complete an objective another one will be available for you to fill up with souls and once all three have been done the pack a punch machine will be unlocked the third and final one is literally right next to the pack a punch machine but once you filled that all up with souls you'll be able to pack a punch and again i recommend highly that you use the nine millimeter sap pistol upgraded as it is just so damn strong against any sort of zombie you could ever think of within this map as well for the easter egg it's incredibly useful and yeah make sure you've also got set up with perks because once you filled up the battery that third and final one that's it you're going to be teleported to a brand new area now this new area is super cool because it's essentially like a parkour sort of crazy place area where you're going to have to traverse across a few different platformed areas and once all players make their way to the first bits of the platforms some really cool storyline stuff is going to happen we have a little visitor a little bit of a memory lane nostalgia trip here as each platform is going to run us through the maps we've played through so far so of course Dr. Straub isn't alive anymore, but we're getting flashbacks of his journey, his progress and advancement when it comes to creating this undead army. So we're first seeing him here in the Mittelberg state where he's, you know, just starting out this creation of horrible zombies. And once he disappears, there's going to be a few zombies which you're going to have to take out. It might involve a small boss as well as just a load of normal spawning zombies. And you're going to have to keep taking them out until no more are spawning 
and then there'll be a platform that will have spawned in front of you which you'll be able to jump onto and get to the next area and it's simply a rinse and repeat until you get to the third and final platform which admittedly I failed a few times if at any point you don't make the jumps on these platforms you miss the platform you don't jump in time then you will land back at the previous area that you were standing on but you will be downed and if no players are present in this section then you're down and out for the count so if you're playing this in co-op I suggest one person holds back just in case there is a player which downs himself or doesn't manage to get this traversing parkour done properly so that they can revive them. But like I said, really cool storyline stuff. So I'm going to stop talking and just let you enjoy these Straub moments. So, you survived the hell of Middleburg. I'm impressed. None of my own soldiers made it out alive. And I ended up torching the entire place. It's a black mark on the map now. A race from history. beautiful little trip down memory lane of Dr. Straub and his unfortunate demise in the Shadowed Throne right there. But this final jump, I'm telling you now, this is a big one. And uh, I mean, maybe my jump button malfunctioned slightly, but you're going to make it by the skin of your teeth. Like you're just going to just going to nab the edge of this platform here um, when you do decide to finally make it. And our fish friend makes a return with a little game, which is a three step game of cup and ball with buckets and the fish where the fish is going to appear, go into a bucket and you have to watch the bucket move and shuffle around the circle and keep following it so that eventually when the shuffling is stopped you can shoot the right bucket the fish is going to come out and you're going to progress there's three different steps towards this sort of like three little progressions where it gets harder and harder as it goes along and trust me this final one is an absolute pain it genuinely took us about maybe four or five tries if at any point you don't shoot the right bucket the fish is not in the bucket you'll have failed it and you're going to have a few mini boss zombies to take care of but it's not too difficult but the more times you fail the more amounts of boss zombies are going to spawn so just be very careful because you might not have a lot of ammo at this point or you might not be able to use a consumable so i just don't want you guys to get this wrong because it's very easy to get it wrong and trial and error is not your friend here because the shuffle changes every single game this is always a random shuffle of cup and ball but once you have completed this successfully you've managed to find the fish in three different bucket shuffles then you'll be teleported back into the map and you'll be able to retrieve the pommel of Barbarossa this will replace your jack-in-the-boxes so be careful but if this is your first time completing this I would advise you pick up the pommel just that the easter egg progress is saved and from here you're just going to play the map as normal you're going to have an objective round if you are entering round nine like we are then round 10 you're going to have the Stad Jaeger boss fight and then you've just got to survive at the evac point until it reaches zero and if you've managed to do that successfully then you will have completed this portion of the easter egg for the tortured path you'll be rewarded with a camouflage as well which is a really awesome sort of scaly fish camo and if you manage to escape the evac point and if survive until extraction so the timer counts down to zero and all players are stood in that circle then you'll have successfully completed the second easter egg and the second chapter in a row and we can jump onto the third and final one which is definitely in my opinion probably the trickiest but we can get this done on a pretty swift round we can get everything done in the map and then progress on to the boss fight so let's jump into chapter three 
Here we go, chapter three. The first thing you want to do as soon as you spawn is you want to run into this main chamber room and there's going to be an uber schnell that you want to melee three times. What will happen is it will let off a load of energy. And as soon as you head into round two and every other even numbered round from then on, if you hold square on the uber schnell, you'll enter a special vision mode where around the map, you're going to be able to see some secret codes. In the map there is a door with a load of runes on it and what we're looking for around the map when you're on a even numbered round is to find a code which contains a set number of these rune symbols which you need to input into the door in order to get the first step completed. Now down below in the description box if you open it you'll find a link to a load of different rune locations. It is advised that if you're looking for these you use a sniper rifle and make sure that you don't have a normal ACOG scope just got the normal like zoomed in scope because you'll want to try and see these as detailed as possible because they aren't always of a very clear quality when you're looking at it with just your normal guns but yeah open up the description box and down below you'll find a bunch of rune locations and what you can do is on round one if you know a load of these different rune codes you can brute force the door by just inputting a load of different codes until you eventually find the right one the things with this map specifically the chapter is you'll want to get stuff done as early as humanly possible and as soon as that uber chanel is powered up you can interact with the door and input a rune code so if you can get the right one then you can advance and do the first step on round one on your screen now you're seeing a bunch of different locations so when you're in this vision mode just go around the map and try and look at all these different locations and see if you can notice a rune code if you can try and get as clear an image of it as possible and then input it into the door and when you've done that you'll notice that when you've put in the right code there'll be a load of a sort of like red lightning around all the runes and you'll hear a completion noise and at the start of the next round you'll have a care package come into the map by the rune door and it's going to be one part of the sword this being the hilt and so on round two if you have the hilt if you manage to get the code correctly and you've had it spawn in on round two then you're doing good if you do it on round three then you're going to have an objective round and that's going to push you to round four. So ideally you want to try and get the code brute forced in and have this spawn in on round two. So pick up the hilt and then place it down into the main chamber here. And what happened is it's going to cause an earthquake and a little box is going to fall down from the earthquake and you'll be able to pick up some flares. The objective with these flares is that in the main chamber room they're going to be four of these little sort of pots which you need to throw the flares into in quick succession. If you don't have all four of these lit within a quick enough time then these are going to slowly start to go out so you want to throw these flares into these pits on the walls underneath the head statues and the ritual room to light them. They're pretty easy to get the angle every time and when all four of those are lit and they've stayed lit lit up what you want to do is you want to run out of this room and go to the rune door and either side of the door where you're inputting those different rune combinations there's going to be two flare bowls which you want to throw the flares into to light up the bowl so when those two are lit you'll you know you've done that step right and then lastly there's going to be one more bowl to the left of laufen blitz you simply want to throw your flare into that and what's going to happen is to the right of that bowl a wall is going to open up revealing the second rune. You want to pick this up, go to the rune door, and then we need to find a second code. Now, if you're speed running this, you should be on round two, and since it's an even numbered round, you can go into the vision mode and look around the map to try and find a rune code. Since we have two runes in the wall now, you're going to find two codes. One is going to be the first code that you used in the first step, and the second one is going to be the one that we're going to be needing to use now. So since it's a even numbered round, you can go in vision mode and look around the map in the various locations that we showed you in this video to see if your code is there. If not, check the description box where we should have all the locations for all the possible codes and just check that until you find a location where you can see your rune code. You want to write this one down and then simply go up to the door and input it and if you've got the right code, you'll see red lighting on the door once again. You also hear a completion noise and when we go to the next round, which if you're going on to round three will be an objective round, either way, there's going to 
be another care package which is going to spawn in and what you want to do is that you want to open that and you'll pick up the pommel and you want to place this into the altar in the center room so we have two of the three sword pieces. This next step is what gave the community a little bit of trouble but it is very simple. If you're playing this on solo there's going to be one pressure pad which you need to stand on. If you're playing in co-op depending on how many players there are if there's two three or four there's either going to be two three or four pressure pads around the map which are going to be activatable by you standing on them you're going to notice they're going to sink into the ground. For this step to be completed properly every player that's in the game needs to be stood on a active pressure plate so they're stood on it and it's pressured down and all that you need to do is you need to be stood on this and getting zombie kills. Doesn't matter if you're killing the zombies from a far distance or if they're right in front of your face. All players need to be stood on these pads and they can't leave until everyone's killed enough zombies and they hear a completion sound. The whole sort of premise of this step is that you're actually collecting the blood from the zombies which is filling up below your pressure pad. But it's a pretty random step. Most people assumed that it was timed based. We had to be stood on these and then after a certain amount of time it completed or it could be a certain amount of kills. But I Either way, all players have to stand on a pressure pad for this to work. There's one in the spawn, there's one by Laufen Blitz, there's one behind the room door, and there's also one that's near the melee perk. Just every player stand on one of these and kill zombies until you hear a completion sound. Don't step off this at any point. This is where some of your consumables, like your insta kills, if you manage to have jack in the boxes at an early round, this will be very useful. Shell shock as well. Just stand on these, don't stand off them, just don't jump off them at all. Stay on it until you hear the completion sound, and if you enter the main room you'll notice that the third rune will have fallen down from this statue and we will be on the ground there at that point you can simply just go to the end of the round try and hold a zombie or a whistling if they've spawned in i don't think they spawn in on round four though but you should have this all done by round four and you pick up the rune you place it into the door and then again you can have to go into the vision mode or just brute force it with all the different rune codes we have in the description until you find the correct one input it and you'll hear a completion noise again and when you go to the next round you'll get a care package drop and that will contain the blade and then you simply go to the main chamber you build all the parts in and then you can pick up the sword of barbarossa and you have the sword and that's it you can simply just progress through the rest of the chapter now until you get to that boss fight complete it and then escape of course, you don't have to speed run this Easter egg quite as efficiently as we're telling you to in this video, but it really does help out. If you're having trouble with these rune codes, you have to be on an even numbered round in order for you to go into the vision mode and find them. But it doesn't matter if you get the sword on round eight or round nine or round 10, as long as you get it, the earlier, the better. And once you've completed the boss fight, and of course, you've all managed to escape by going to the extraction zone and being in it at the right moment, it counts to zero, you will have completed all of the easter eggs and the cutscene should play and you will have unlocked all of the maps available as standard survival maps and that is the end of the easter egg guide for the tortured path you'll have three new camos if you've never completed these easter egg chapters before and you'll have access to those survival maps like i mentioned if you found this guide useful i would really really appreciate it if you left a like rating on the video before leaving as that would be absolutely amazing this took a very very long time to put together and a like rating only takes a second so that would be very very appreciative and kind of you and again let me know your thoughts on this down below in the comment section be sure to also fill it with your playstation names so you guys can uh, team up and get into that public playlist to torture path to unlock all this stuff the normal way and get the cutscene again if this changes and you don't need to be in that playlist if they for some reason patch it or update it so that's not necessary i will update the description to let you know that but as of right now you need to be in the public playlist in order for you to get the cutscene thank you so much for watching you've been amazing and i'll catch you on another video very very soon